Division. Okay. Company uh, 175th, Company G. Let's see, we're a scout. Should I should have put them on. It'll go good in the picture. Well, that's up to you. No, you say my miniatures. The big ones are my showcase, which I will. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll, we'll yeah. hold that. Right? You, right? you can end. hold it at the end. Okay. You can hold we'll it up and see. then explain. Look good at the pictures anyhow. Mm -hmm. All right, we're rolling. I got okay. miniatures. All right, this is an interview at the Days Inn, Hicksville, New York, 16th of July, 2003, approximately 8:45 a.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Uh, would you tell me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? My name is Michael R. Tetro, T-E-T-R-O. I was born October 30th, 1922. And where? Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Um, what was your educational background prior to entering military service? Well, I had grammar school education mm -hmm. for four years. When it's more than four years. And I had three and a half years of, of uh, high school. Mm -hmm. And I, re I quit high school to go into the services. Okay. okay. Do you uh, remember <clears throat> where you were and your reaction when you heard about Pearl Harbor? I was in high school and heard about Pearl Harbor. And after that I decided to uh, quit school and go into the military. Mm -hmm. When did you uh, enter service? Enter service? <laughs> January. Don't mind, we got a little nervous. That's okay. See it somewhere. I want discharge papers. January 30th, 1943. Okay. Um, were you, in, did you enlisted then? Instead no, of, no, I was drafted. You were drafted, okay. How old were you when you entered service? I was 18. 18, okay. Um, where did you go for your basic training? Well, the basic training in uh, St. Louis Obispo, California. St. Louis Obispo, California. Mm -hmm. Had you ever been away from home up I until that point? No, I wasn't. Okay, were you homesick or anything? Or Well, I figured there was a war going on, so I joined the rest of the crowd. Well, you know, the fellows in my neighborhood just wiped out the world drafted, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was 18 at that particular time, and they grabbed all of us, 18, 19, and 20 years of age, they grabbed us, and they drafted us. Mm -hmm. We were all happy to go, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. I think the draft, the draft at that particular time was great. You know, if you were in draft at those days, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> you know, punch your eardrum or heart condition or whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, where, could you tell us a little bit, did you receive any specialized basic training outside of the ordinary? Just, just infantry. Mm -hmm. All infantry basic, okay. Um, where Were you assigned to a unit or were you a replacement? I was assigned to a unit, the 35th Division mm -hmm. up in uh, California. Mm-hmm. And would you tell us about, uh, I guess, where you went from California and, and so on? Oh, yeah. I have a basic training in uh, California, St. Louis Obispo. From there we went down to Camp Brooker, Alabama, Camp Brooker, Alabama. Mm -hmm. And we finished off our uh, training there. We had the maneuvers, well, I spent the whole year down there. We had maneuvers, all kinds of uh, army tactics, killing tactics and whatnot. But I, my main thing was I wanted to go to the Air Force. When I went to high school, I was taking up motor, uh, automobile mechanic, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be a pilot. So it so happened when I was drafted, they said to me, uh, infantry? I said, no, he says single corps. I said, no, if it's, uh, Air Force. He said, no, how about single corps? I said, I, said, I want to go to the Air Force. Well, as, and it would be, they sent me to the infantry. I spent the whole year with the uh, 35th Division. In the meantime, the Air Force was looking for flyers at a particular time. So I transferred transfer to uh, the Air Force. And I was stationed three months in uh, Miami Beach, 1944, uh, January, February, March. I was Air Force cadet. Can I go on? Yes. In that, yes. In that particular time, they had too many pilots. I need gunners now. Mm -hmm. So they sent me to uh, Camp uh, Air Force Base in Needles, Arizona. I was supposed to be a guttery on one of the uh, planes, bombers. Then the war really got tough. We needed infantrymen. We were taking a beating there. 
So he took us out of the Air Force and put me in the 78th Division in North Carolina. I had uh, eight weeks basic training with them, and then I went to uh, shipped overseas and put in the 29th Division. That's how I got into the 29th Division. Now, when was that? What uh, what year was? That was uh, September. Uh, 44. 44. So that was in England you were assigned to the, when you got to England? Yeah. Um, how did you cross over? Did you go in convoy or a single we ship? We went up on a single ship, Ile de France, mm -hmm. uh, the troop ship. Mm -hmm. And we went to England, Scotland, and Scotland we rode down by, by train down to the uh, southern point of uh, England. And they, from there we were on a, on a ship, across the channel, then we put us on those seas, and we landed in Normandy. Mm -hmm. Actually, the war was the only was actually uh, uh, the fighting there in Norway was over, over already because mm -hmm. I got to it later on. Because my alpha was a reserve alpha, 175th or reserve alpha. They never fought. It was always a reserve, you know. Mm -hmm. 115th was, was the main uh, fighting element of uh, the 29th Division. They lost quite a few men in Normandy. A lot of people asked me, you were in Normandy. I said, no, I was there, but uh, I can't say I, I was there fighting. Why lie? Mm -hmm. All these poor guys were killed and drowned. Mm -hmm. And that brings back a lot of memories, like pictures I see, like Saving Prior Ryan. Mm -hmm. Things like that is very uh, heart filling, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm with the same outfit, but yet I'm glad I wasn't there D Day, because I would have probably never been here. Mm -hmm. So they put me in the 29th Division and uh, the 175th, and we went to the front lines, went through towns in France. I when, was, when were you assigned to the front lines? When did you first go into the front September. lines? September. September of 44? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So that's we went to towns in France. I can't, could not, couldn't even pronounce their names. And uh, we just went to towns. The main mm -hmm. thing is go to a town, and get to it. Mm -hmm. All you got to just get to it. Take the town, go to the next town. Did you do a lot of street fighting? Yeah, well, we have plenty. Not, not a lot, but a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so this particular day. September, oh, November 15th. Here's how I noticed, November 16th, 1944. This map was put in the... Mm -hmm. You could hold that up to the camera and Wayne could focus on that. This map was put in the 29th Division magazine. Because I belonged to the 29th Division. And I mm -hmm. looked, at, looked at the sketch there and they said, there's my outfit. Company G, 175th. And that particular morning I was a head scout. Going to this particular town. Mm -hmm. The town was called Zittledorf. I can't if I pronounce it S I E R S D O R F. Okay. Uh -huh. So I was a first scout in town there. Because it says this company G. Where are we? Uh -huh. Company G. Oh, was okay, it? yes. I was, a, I was a first scout in town. I was the lead scout of the whole, the whole platoon. I got into town, it was very quiet. There was no action there. I don't know, I don't know, I didn't know why. But I went to a, a bakery to see who was in the building. And there's five Germans downstairs, real kids, about 16, 17 years of age. They all gave up. And they were crying. Oh, what are you guys crying about? You, you, you're prisoners, they're of war, so you're mm. safe. We're not going to kill you. They came out, they didn't want to fight, they didn't want to give up. So I was an inquisitive guy, I walked outside the back of the building, and they saw the bombers, hit the whole town like crazy. All of a sudden I felt, felt sharp, a sharp pain to my stomach, and I said, gosh, what's this? I was hit. I called back to the bakery, and I spent the whole day there, until later on in the evening, two medics came in and they tried to treat me. They told me to stay there for a while, and uh, we'll take care of you later on. We got to get some fellas to pick you up. They put me on a stretcher, put me down a basement nearby. In the meantime, the town was still being bombed. And uh, that evening, it slowed down a bit. They put me on a jeep like mesh. Mm -hmm. Took back to the rear echelon to a field hospital. Now, what kind of. Uh Medical treatment? Did you get up fr uh, on the front line? You they, they couldn't. They couldn't give me no uh, no pills because mm -hmm. I was, was a stomach wound. Mm -hmm. They just patched me up. And that was it. Mm -hmm. they now, what, what happened to you? Were you 
was hit by shrapnel from no, the bombs? I was hit by a sniper. Oh, you were shot, okay. Yeah. I think it was a 22 because they were using 22s at that particular time. Nobody knew that. Because mm -hmm. 22 was quiet mm -hmm. and they wouldn't, didn't smoke much. And the funny thing, these, these snipers are shrewd. They get you at daybreak or, or, when, at, at, or at night when it gets, the park gets dark, they'll shoot at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I was hit in the morning anyhow. And uh, I went to the field hospital. When I woke up the next morning, I saw all saints around me, statues. I said, gosh, I'm in heaven. <laughs> I must be dead. I had people talking, nurses talking, doctors talking. And uh, said, how you feel? I said, I feel terrible. In the meantime, they had slipped me open. And uh, whatever they did to me, I don't know. I didn't ask them any questions about it. And I spent 10 days in a field hospital in Belgium. From there, they put me on a plane and went back to England, the hospital there in England. And I was going through all kinds of tests. It seems like I was getting adhesions in my, inside of me that uh, let the wounds were healing right. I had a lot of pain. So I kept going back to the doctors and they were going to send me back to the front line. I said, look, I'm in very bad pain, guys. I can't take it. I said, I can't fight them. You know what? We're going to send you back to the States. And from there, we're going to send you to Japan or the Pacific. Said, okay, Doc, whatever you say. When I got back to the States, they, they sent me to Fort Devon's Mass, Massachusetts. So a doctor says, we're going to operate on you again, he says. A lot of adhesions in there. We've got to take the adhesions out. And I spent almost a whole month there in uh, Fort Devon's Mass. And from there, I was discharged on disability. Of course, we, uh, before uh, I got to my front lines, something always comes to my mind. One time, one night we were in a trench in this little French town. We'd be a bomb like crazy. And in my little trench was my lieutenant and then a soldier alongside of you. The lieutenant took out rosary beads. He says to me, I'm Jewish. But tonight of all fates, <laughs> there was no atheist in the foxhole. Yeah. It was always left an impression on my mind. Hmm. Interesting. After you uh, <clears throat> were discharged, uh, and, and later on, did you uh, make use of the GI Bill at all? No, I didn't, no. Um, how about the 5220 Club? I didn't even take that, because I thought they wanted it back later on. I said, mm -hmm. I was on disability 50%, so I figured I'd live on that for a while. Mm -hmm. I went back to my home, my parents, they took care of me. Mm -hmm. So I was home about six months and I got a job at a post office. Now, which I put 40 years with them, and I retired. I retired about 20 years. Later. Did you ever have any problems from the wounds later Still on? Still got problems. Okay. Um, did you join any veterans organizations? I belonged to four or five of them. American Legion, VFW, DAV, uh, Pearl Harbor Survivors, Pearl Harbor, uh, not Pearl Harbor, sorry about that. I'm thinking about a friend of mine. Uh, Michael Hart Club. Mm -hmm. uh, I just joined the Sons of the Legion. Because my father was a veteran. Oh. I got all kinds of hats. Uh -huh. I, I, I guess so. Maybe I should have fought it. <laughs> you could take them on and off during the... Oh, actually, you're never sitting still. Where are you going now? Yeah, you want to be a hero. Well, it's a funny thing. When I retired from the post office, that's why I got... I switched over to... Uh, the switch. I joined the American Legion at that particular time. Because mm -hmm. when I was working, I, I was working two or three jobs, you know, support the family. And the Legion of the VFW never, never dawned on me. Or the AV. Then I got a little aggressive with all, all these organizations. I got very active with them. Mm -hmm. With the VFW, I'm a safety officer there, and I'm the DEV, and with the, I was, I'm a sergeant of arms. American Legion, I'm a trustee there, and a historian, amongst other things. And I volunteer at my parish, St. Vincent Paul Parish in Elmont, one day a week on the Thursdays. I'll mm -hmm. give the needy food and clothing and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I make good use of my retirement, you know? Yes. Which I'm never home. <laughs> Let her watch them. Did you want to hold up? Uh, that well, I, um, did you uh, is ever stay in contact with anyone that you served with? No, I never did. Um, I was I was a loner in the service. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to bother. Yeah, as a I, scout, I, I, I imagine. Yeah, you know, didn't front. bother anybody. Yeah. Did so, you uh, do you go to reunions at all? No, never did. Never have. I get the magazines. Mm -hmm. once, you know, once every three months. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, have you ever gone back over to Europe? No, I haven't. Okay. Just curious. Okay. All right. Um, there, were there some things you wanted to show us? Well, this is where I was born, wounds in Germany. Mm -hmm. 
And this is a picture of a bee. If you hold it up to the camera, Wayne can focus on that. This picture was taken in Miami Beach when I was in the Air Corps. That's one of the best shots. <laughs> and uh, I look different now today, right? <laughs> you don't have the hat on. <laughs> I had hair, a lot of hair. I was 18. I was 18 then. In fact, I got a sketch at home. One of the girls and uh, one of the okay. volunteers in the Air Force. Okay, she uh, made a sketch of this. Mm -hmm. um, now, you have uh, some I, of them. Oh, okay. I was also recognized as a hero. And uh, Tom Hempstead gave you a medal. If you. Tom Hempstead gave you a medal. All the things I do in town, you know, volunteer work. Oh. And I recognized my, my, my work I did. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Mr. Guardino. He was at uh, Hempstead, uh, was he a leader at that time? Well, he retired now, and he gave you a medal over in Point Lookout. Mm -hmm. Usually, I recognize five men a year. Mm -hmm. That do outstanding things for the, for the veterans. Mm -hmm. Now you have miniatures of your your medals. Did you want to show us? This is my medals. Okay. Right. The combat infantry badge. What are some of the others that you? The ones with Piper Heart, mm -hmm. Bronze Star. Uh, you know what the funny thing? <laughs> you didn't laugh. I go to schools, right? And the kids, what's that? So I can't take the thing off. So I, I write down a piece of paper. What is it? <laughs> what do I do with that thing? All right. Left to right, or top. <laughs> well, the, the kids, you know, I can't take it off a show. Mm -hmm. I got the combat badge, European Invasion Medal, Bronze Star, Purple Heart, Victory Medal, Good Conduct Medal. Medal from the French government. Anybody was over Normandy and freedom, they gave us a medal. I left it home though, I didn't bring it. Mm -hmm. That's a large medal. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, that's about it. Okay. Um, I also got a medal from, uh, from Governor Pataki. Oh, yes, okay. That, the uh, the state pocket. conspicuous state service cross. I got that in my pocket, right? I got a miniature also of that. In fact, a lot of photos in my outfit, you know, in the, the Legion and the VFW, I told the guys to put it for it. Mm -hmm. eh, what are we doing with medals? Now later on, when you see folks get medals, they want a medal. How do you go about it? Uh -huh. I got the application, so I give an application. File it out, send it in. Now, what was that one card that you brought in? This is the card my mother received. If you go hold when that up, Wayne can focus on that too. My mother received this from the government that I was wounded overseas. Gunshot wounds to the abdomen. Mm -hmm. How do you okay. think... Um, Thank you. Your military service affected or changed your life? Well, my family, my father was a, was a veteran of World War One. Me and my brother was in World War Two. We were both wounded. And I had two of my brothers were in Korea. In fact, one guy didn't come back. He didn't make it. My other brother. And my son was a Vietnam vet. He hated it. You know, Vietnam vets, they, they, they fought everything. I like you know, blame them or not. We, we should have been there, things like that. And that. But you got whatever the government says, you got to go. Mm -hmm. That's the way it goes. So it, it, it uh, gave me an experience. I'll never forget. I crossed the country seven times on uh, transport uh, trains, and I saw a good part of the country. Going overseas, I saw England and how uh, people <coughs> lived in France and Belgium. And in Germany, part of, first part of Germany, was, mm -hmm. uh, how the people lived there. In fact, I, I got to be friendly with some people in Brussels. At night, I used to sneak out to, to, their, to their home. They used to give us coffee. I used to give my cigarettes. I never, I didn't smoke, smoke. so I gave my cigarettes. And uh, they were very nice people there, very friendly. And uh, Belgian people were nice people, very friendly. Of course, we gave them a lot of goodies, gave mm -hmm. goods, you know, that we got. I used to a carton of cigarettes a week, so I used to give it to the natives. Mm -hmm. I didn't smoke. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys were solar cons. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. Why sold? What was I say? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome.